Good morning. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. Today is the last Sunday of July, a day that traditionally we've set aside as Back to School Sunday, where we would give away some backpacks uh, for those riding the buses. Well, we're not coming in on the bus today, and, uh, and I'm not even sure if we're going to go back to school this year. But we will be giving away some backpacks uh, here in, at the end of our Bible study here for this morning. So let's jump right into that then. Let's find Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew chapter number 24. I want to talk to you today, both this morning and this afternoon, uh, about some things that have just been, um, they've been pressing because they've been in, uh, because everybody's been talking about it. Uh, to be honest, um, Matthew chapter 4, Jesus talks about it. So let's look here, Matthew chapter 24, beginning of verse number 3. The Bible says that he's, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in, come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto the nations, and then shall the end come. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this day you've given to us. We thank you for your word, for the teaching of your word, for the promises of your word. Father, I pray this morning that you would help us as we, as we extract truth from your word, that we apply them to our hearts and to our lives. That you would help us, Lord, to be the example that we should be of a life who is committed to you, of one who is trusting in you and, uh, and believes on you. Now, Lord, I pray that you would help us do all of that. In Jesus' name, amen. The answer to this question that the disciples have asked Jesus, uh, it's been on the minds of believers ever since. Every single generation since Jesus left, uh, since the ascension, every single generation believes they're the last generation. And the Apostle Paul, as he wrote his New Testament for us, believed, hey, Jesus is coming back and he's probably coming back real soon. Every single generation since then has believed, has believed it. When will Jesus come? When is Jesus coming back? We have seen over the last uh, four or five months some things that we've never seen before in, 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 in our history for sure. And it seems like everything is coming to an end. So Jesus is going to be coming back real soon. You know, even the secular world around us talks more and more about this reality, the end of the world. They talk about it as if it is an actual, uh, an actual event that will take place, the apocalypse, the end of the world. Uh, it, they write books about it. They make movies about it. They, they, it's, they make TV shows about it. Today, I want to look at what Jesus has to say about it because it'll be a comfort to us. It'll be a, uh, it'll, it'll be a help to us. Now the disciples asked this question, Jesus, when are you going to come back? When is the end of the world going to take place? And so many times we've had so many people come to this passage of Scripture and other passages of Scripture and to try to determine when is Jesus coming back? When is this going to happen? And, we, and you know, truth is, 
even if we could figure it out for ourselves, even if Jesus did leave us some sort of, um, some sort of code that we could come up to, a, to this conclusion, what would it change? Would it change anything? And I, and I know some people are like, well, no, if I knew that Jesus was going to come back today, I would certainly live my life differently. Then live your life differently because Jesus could come back today. That's what we should do. The fact is, even if we did know, we wouldn't do anything different. You know, when we were when we were kids, my mom worked and and uh, she would leave us kids there by ourselves and she would leave a list of chores for us to do while she was gone. Now, we knew she was coming back. We even knew what time she was coming back. But every single day, the same thing happened. We got up, we got dressed, we had breakfast, and we played, and we went outside, and we had water fights, and we cleaned, up, we cleaned ourselves up from that. We watched TV, watched cartoons, and sure enough, be right before Mom came home, <gasps> Mom's coming home. And then we frantically got busy. Look at the list. What's the big thing on the list? Get that done real quick. Get, get, the, get the living room cleaned up. So that's the first thing that she sees. Well, it didn't change anything. Every single day, this is how we lived our life. Basically, every single day we knew. And it didn't change anything. And I believe, as Christians, we do the same thing. The truth is, if you believe that Jesus is coming back, you should live every single day and every single moment, every single hour, as if this could be the day, this could be the hour. To, Jesus could come back right now. And it's true. He could. Let's look at this passage and see what Jesus says about this. Because if, if we break this passage up into a few different sections, it'll help us. Uh, quite a bit, especially as we um, uh, as we correlate and as we compare this passage with other passages that will that we will, Lord willing, will will look at later on in uh, in Revelation, and uh, and then some of the prophecy from the Book of Daniel. Um, as we compare all of those, and as we look at a structure for all of this, we can see a few different things. First off, um, he talks about the beginning of the end, the beginning of the end, and he gives us a, a word of warning. Here in verses 4 through 6, Jesus says, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, I sh and shall deceive many. You shall, uh, and so, so the first warning is, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. There are going to be so many false prophets. There are going to be so many false believers. There will be many false Christs. False messiahs. False prophets, false teachers. And if we are not careful, we can be deceived by them. This is Jesus' warning to us. What was the, the first thing he says? Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. How can we prevent ourselves from being deceived? Stay in his word. Stay in the word of God. Continue to study, continue to read, continue to pour over Scripture so that we'll not be deceived. And my friends, this is a day when religion is so prevalent, but truth is so scarce. Religion is so is very prevalent today, but the truth is very, very scarce. There are so many false gospels, false teachers, false preachers. And we've got to be careful. First thing Jesus says, don't be deceived. You know, things are going to get worse. Right up to the very end, things are going to get worse and worse and worse. As, the, as His coming approaches, everything is going to kind of snowball and kind of get worse and build on top of each other. Building on top. And, and, and the, the way that He describes the end times for us here in Matthew chapter 24 look around this is what we're looking at today we'll get into some of these details here uh, Lord willing later on but this is what he tells us and then he said the first thing he says don't be deceived false teaching is going to be prevalent false prophets going to be prevalent 
false Christ is going to be prevalent. And I have never in my life, I've never seen such a rapid growth in religion and alongside of a rapid decline in truth. We have so many people not concerned with the truth. So we're looking right on the outside. And my friend, these things are going to get worse and worse and worse. Then he gives us a little bit of an explanation. In verse number 6, he says, You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet come. There is going to be warfare. And then there, he talks about rumors of war. What does he mean? Well, warfare is pretty straightforward. Two groups in opposition take up arms and fight one another. That's pretty straightforward. Rumors of wars can take on several different meanings. Rumors of wars, you could say, is uh, for, for them, especially in that context in Jesus' time, you would hear of fightings from other places and not be directly involved and have no impact on you. But let's look at more recent history. What would a rumor of war be? Well, what do you think, um, what, what is a war on drugs? Is it an actual war? No, not, well, we hope not, right? No, not really. And now we're looking at war on social justice, war against, uh, against different things. It seems, seems like now we're, we, we have these, these wars that we're fighting, and it's not really a war at all. It's us trying to control people's actions. But it's not really war. It's not warfare in the sense of two armed uh, entities going to, going to battle. I have a rumor of a war. It's not really battle. But it's a war. A war against some ideology, against some action. And so we see this obviously here today. And then in verse number 7, he says, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Now, nation rising against nation, that's, that was very common. The disciples understood that plain as day. Nation rising against nation, that's been true as long as, well, as, long as there have been nations. Nations will rise up and, and, and come and go. And if you read your Old Testament, Israel is very, very familiar with nation rising against a nation. But a kingdom versus a kingdom. In for the disciples in Bible times, this would have been would have been a bit confusing for them, I would think, because certainly they understood what a kingdom is. In fact, they understood very well what a kingdom is. Jerusalem and uh, and Israel is underneath the Roman Empire at this point when when the Bible's written. So they knew it was under the Roman kingdom, the Roman Empire, and that was the uh, the the dominating the dominant world force, and that was the kingdom. Now they didn't like it, they didn't agree with it, they wanted out of it. But what other kingdom could come to their aid? There was no other kingdom that could come and 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 fight for them. This is why they wanted it. They they desperately wanted a Messiah so badly. The one person who could lead them into safety from the Roman Empire. But what happens today? And the truth is, until World War I, we had never seen kingdom versus kingdom on a global scale this way. Now, World War I was the first time we saw uh, many nations, many countries, form a coalition as a kingdom to, to fight against another group of nations and coalition of nations. And so this, uh, this, idea, this was the idea of kingdom against kingdom, kingdom warfare. He moves on, he says, there shall be, and he mentions three things. There shall be famines, there shall be pestilences, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. Now, let me uh, very quickly cover these three, these three things. He says there should be famines. A famine is, uh, it, it, it is, it is more than just a lack of food. Right? This definition of famine um, can be caused by uh, several different factors. 
um, including warfare, which we will we'll see again in, uh, in Revelation, Lord willing. Um, but everything from government policies to um, to weather patterns, extreme weather, to uh, to, to disease, a, a, a pandemic like we're seeing now. Um, in fact, it's it's it, one of the factors of, of famine is uh, is population, where the where the population cannot be supported by the land mass. And so you would see that uh, today, if we if we could plant crops on every empty square foot of land then then how many people could that support um, and it's estimated that by 2050 by the year 2050 there would be 9.2 billion people on the planet 9.2 billion and that will double the amount of food needed for everyone to survive of those 9.2 billion people, 7 to 8 billion of those would live in the world's cities, urban areas. What happens when you get that many people in an urban area? There would be a, there would be a shortage of fresh water. And, and when there's a shortage of fresh water, it's easier to, take, to, to get more fresh water from the farms. And uh, obviously they need it. To, uh, to be able to water crops, trees, so that they can supply the food, uh, and, and herds for that matter, so they can continue to supply the food. And so thus you see a, the beginning of a, of a shortage, and now, we, now during, this, uh, during this most recent pandemic, the, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we've already heard about food shortage and a break in the supply chain of, of food for food and this is the exact same thing that's going to happen and so Jesus here points to this and says there, there's going to be famines plural why would he say famines plural most of the time in, in Bible times you would see the areas that would be hit um, individually for instance when uh, on uh, for instance in our Wednesday night Bible study in the book of Genesis uh, there was a famine that was there that 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 um, affected that entire region, that entire area, but would not have affected Asia or um, or some some other areas. So here you're talking about major populations of people, and right now you can go to um, you can go to uh, many different websites and you can see where the food shortages are, and it's estimated that by the end of this pandemic that we're in right now. We'll have 165 million people added to a stage of famine that that's uh, that that is um, uh, food insecurity or, or acute hunger uh, is what it, what it's called. And there's there's varying degrees of famines as well. But Jesus says it's famines, and guess what we're seeing right now? Famines. He says there's be pestilences. And of course, we know right now um, we're we're right in the midst of this uh, this pandemic with the uh, with the COVID nineteen uh, virus. But let me um, but let me read you this article it was written June thirtieth or was published June thirtieth this year in a publication called Medical Express. The um, the headline reads: New swine flu strain found in China poses a threat of pandemic the flying the the, uh, the the swine flu <laughs> the swine flu is coming back and so these uh, now between 2011 and 2018 the swine flu there were 179 swine flu strains that were found but there's another one, an additional uh, swine flu strain that's coming out, that's becoming prevalent right now, that they say, that they very seriously believe would, uh, would, would cause or would, uh, would jump from human to human. And, it, and they're concerned about it. 
there was there were uh, there have been there's been so much research done. I read an article uh, published earlier this year um, about about um, a virus that once they just they looked at it, they discovered it that had no genes. The, the the genes that made up this virus were completely unknown. They have no idea where it comes from. They have no idea how it's formed. They have no idea the, 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 the root of it, the base of it at all. They don't even know where these components are coming from. And that's troubling as well. And that's not to mention all of the other things, SARS, MERS, Ebola, uh, avian flu, swine flu, uh, the Zika virus, all of these still alive and well. My friends, when Jesus says, hey, there's going to be pestilences, my friend, we are looking at pestilences today, right now. It says there will be earthquakes in diverse, in diverse places. And I know that the, um, that the, 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 the pandemic has kind of overshadowed everything and the politics has really overshadowed everything. And, uh, and we can go back and look this year, the major earthquakes this year, we never even really heard of all that much about because of the overshadowing of the politics that we're in right now in this country and because of the pandemic that we're, that we're working through right now. But I'm telling you right now, earthquake seismic activity is on the rise. Seismic activity is on the rise. Uh, more major earthquakes now than ever before. And you can look at it, you can get an earthquake app on your phone, and you can every single day there's a there's a major earthquake somewhere on the planet. I don't think I've ever opened up my, my earthquake app and there wasn't a major earthquake somewhere. Now some of them in the middle of the ocean you never hear about. Some of them in on the um, uh, on the Pacific Rim you never hear about them. But major earthquakes. In fact, we haven't heard from our missionaries in uh, Papua New Guinea. They just experienced a major earthquake just offshore, 7.4, I believe. Never hear about it here. Earthquakes are taking place at a phenomenal rate, unlike we've ever seen in human history. Pestilences on the rise, unlike we've seen in human history. But then Jesus gives us a word of hope, and this is where I want to stop for today, for this morning. When you look down to verse number 13, He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto the nations and to the end to come. There is a, a word of hope that Jesus gives us. Salvation is available. And salvation is available and salvation is found in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, we're sinners. What we deserve is death in hell. We know that. Jesus knows that. God knows that. But God loved us so much. He made a way for us to be reconciled back to Him. He sent His Son Jesus to pay for our sin debt. My friends, if these things are troubling you that we read about today, if the world around you troubles you deeply within your soul, my heart is not troubled. Jesus told his disciples, let not your heart be troubled. We have a hope, and his name is Jesus. My friend, you can put your trust in him today, right now, and you can be saved. Father, I thank you so much for your word, and I thank you for these, these truths of your word. And Lord, I pray that you would help us uh, to find our, our rest and our hope and our trust in you. That you would be honored and glorified by our lives. Oh Lord, I pray that if there's one here that doesn't know you as Savior, I pray that if there's one here who's, who's having struggling and, 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 a, and their heart is troubled by these things, by the news of your coming again, Lord, I pray that they would get their relationship with you resolved. That they would, I, I pray, find that, that peace that, that is beyond understanding. And I pray, Lord, that they would place their faith in you. You'd reach out and save them. I pray you'd give them the courage to make that decision to commit their life to you. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would uh, just 
that you would continue on your work of saving, changing lives. Lord, we love you today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Now, don't forget, tonight we'll have, Lord willing, we'll have another uh, another Bible study posted. And we'll continue here in this passage. we got so much to unpack here from the rest of this passage of Scripture, all right? So you come back this afternoon a little bit later. And uh, right here to our YouTube channel, we'll have another Bible study. And then after that, Lord willing, we'll see you again on Wednesday night, all right? Now, I know that there have been some who have been watching and waiting patiently because we have a drawing to tend to. All right, now this is how this is going to work. I'm going to draw a ticket out of here, and uh, this is for the girls, all right, the girls that typically have been riding the bus, for the boys that have been typically riding the bus, and then I've got one for these uh, for the church kids uh, that, that don't come in on the bus, all right, and, uh, and so that's how we're going to do that this year. And so I have the, we're going to start with the girls, of course, the ladies first, all right? And uh, these have been mixed up pretty well. And so let me grab a ticket out of here, and I will let you know what that number is. Now, once we get the ticket number, then you will need to call Brother Climber or text Brother Climber and let him know you heard the message today. You watched the video and you heard your ticket and confirm that with them, and uh, that way they will. Uh, that way you'll get your backpack delivered to you. All right. Now I have a ticket in my hand. This one. It is the lucky one, right here. And uh, see this ticket. This is it right here. All right. Uh, this ticket number is five, two, seven, one. Zero, eight, five, five, two, seven, one, zero, eight, five. That's the number right there. Oh, let me get it, get it to focus on it. Can I get it to focus on it? There we go. Five, two, seven, one, zero, eight, five. So I, I, I trust that you will call in, call Brother Climber and uh, or text Brother Climber and let him know you have that winning ticket and uh, and I saw your name on there so I'm really excited for you and uh, and I want you definitely to call him, give him a call and claim that prize all right and I appreciate you being here with us today and uh, and watching in the video. Now I've got the the, the boys uh, tickets here. And uh, so I'm sh I'm doing a sh I'm shuffling them up real quick. You can see that I'm shuffling them. I think maybe possibly you probably can't see anything because I'm in the way. All right, but here we go. I've got another ticket in my hand, and this ticket number is five two seven one one zero. Seven, five, two, seven, one, one, zero, seven, five, two, seven, one, one, zero, seven. If that is your ticket, uh, you be sure to call in or text Brother Climber, and uh, and be sure to pick that up. I'm working right now with these church, uh, with the church kids tickets, and so let me give them a shuffle very quickly here. And you have been so patient and waiting for me, and I appreciate that. And uh, here's what we're going to do. If you, uh, if you can, give Brother Climber a call sometime between today, right now, and Wednesday night. Give Brother Climber a call. And if you do not claim your prize by Wednesday night, then we will have this drawing again, and we'll just draw another number, all right? So if you did not get your number called, don't throw that ticket away. All right, don't throw your ticket away. Um, we'll, we'll continue the drawing here. Uh, if those folks do not, um, do not call in to claim their prize, all right? So I probably should have mentioned that earlier because some of you might be digging through the trash can right now trying to, tape your pe trying to tape your ticket pieces back together. But either way, we'll let you know next, next uh, Sunday how, uh, how the drawing went and whether, uh, whether or not someone claimed that prize. I've got one more to draw here, and I've got it in my hand, and here it is. It is five, two, seven, one, 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 five. Five, two, seven, 
one 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 five. Five two seven one 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 five. I am so excited for them as well, and I know that they will call and uh, and they'll be they'll be thrilled to get that uh, to get that prize. So if your number was called, be sure to call Brother Climber. Uh, if your number was uh, one of the ones that was chosen here today, you be sure to call Brother Climber and uh, and let him know. All right, and I am saving these. I've got the tickets right here. And uh, and so that so that next week, if you don't if you don't call in, then uh, then we'll do it again. All right. So once again, uh, five two seven one zero eight five five two seven one one zero seven and five two seven one 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 five. Those are our winning ticket numbers. You be sure to call in. I look forward. To hear and back that you've called in and uh, and have claimed those prizes, I'm very excited for you about that. The next time that we'll meet is this afternoon. We have Bible study right here, and uh, Lord willing, and if everything works the way that it's supposed to, we'll meet right back here for YouTube for another Bible study this afternoon. All right. Until then, my friends, God bless you. Have a great day.